All right. A very warm welcome to another episode of Fauza's Diary. If you are looking for something little and yet motivating, then you have stumbled upon the right show. That's the beauty about my diaries. They inspire us, they encourage us, they uplift us, but also they make us think. Joining me on this particular conversation today is my sister friend, Dr. Jane Brasso, all the way from Australia, all the way. She is Kenyan, but now she calls Australia her home as well. And she lives there with her entire family. She works for the federal government of Australia in regulating fisheries. She is the current sitting president of Soroptimisti International of Canberra Chapter. Jen, I am so happy to have you on my show today. And thank you so much for taking your time to join me on this conversation. Please welcome Jen. Yay! Thank you, Fauza, for having me today. I'm really um, uh, grateful. Thank you. Uh, pleasure is all mine. I've really been meaning to have this conversation with you in a very long time. And now I just feel like the day is today. And uh, I know, Jen, you are sitting on different capacity. You are, you are serving as the current president of Soroptimist International Canberra. You are also working for the government in... Uh, regulating uh, fisheries, you know? Yes. I'm just mm -hmm. curious to, to, to know from you, how has this current season of corona affecting, first of all, um, you know, your work as a regulating, um, uh, um, uh, in, in regulating in fisheries, but I'm also curious to hear how are you also navigating this whole uh, new um, pandemic as a president of the Soro Optimist in Canberra as well? Because those are totally two different fields. You are serving, and then the other one, you are also working for the government. Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's true, Fauza, and thank you so much for asking that because they are two very different things. The work I do in regu regulating fisheries, basically um, I am a law enforcer and I also um, participate in um, policy development. And it has been a very big challenge for us considering that um, up to date, I have been working from home and so have uh, most of my colleagues okay. working from home. And yet the job of fisheries regulation, you ha have to actually physically go to the field. You have mm -hmm. to get onto those uh, fishing vessels and check that they're actually doing the right thing. So that has been a challenge to us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, a lot of illegal um, um, things are happening across mm -hmm. the borders on the waters you know you know the ocean it's vast yeah. so yeah so if you're not able to send um people to check what's happening on all boats coming in that can be such a challenge because people are using that as a means of getting in Australia. all sorts of things yes mm. so that that has been a challenge in my area of work okay. and um when we speak of the Soroptimist International, where I mostly it's community work, mm -hmm. a lot of my work has been involved with um, domestic violence. And during this pandemic, as you mm -hmm. may appreciate, I think in a lot of countries, mm -hmm. domestic violence has been on the rise. Yeah, because and we it's... are all stuck in one house now, are we? <laughs> yes, exactly. You're there with uh, you we know, are all there. spouses we and are children. We to together 24-7. Now, uh, 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 we are all in this. Exactly. So you can imagine, you know, the things that never, you never addressed before, uh, suddenly you're, you're, you're confronted with all these things. So we've had uh, lots of cases of domestic violence. Unfortunately, as we look at statistics, we mm -hmm. have lost women in the society because like Soroptimist International is generally an organization that empowers women and girls. Mm -hmm. So this has been a big issue. Of course, we work along with uh, organizations that work with uh, mentoring of boys and men mm -hmm. because that is what society is made up of. We can't just work on one side. So obviously we've seen that we are not able to provide as much support 
in that area of domestic violence we've, because okay. a lot of our work has also been we've through fundraising to mm, provide also legal services for yeah. those to mm, provide also legal been affected by yeah. those um, mm, has also been and also yeah. like um, mm, has also yeah. been, and also yeah. like oh, just being aware of where we can direct them to there's been um you know like a very little movement in from different places people don't want to move from one place to the other mm. so that yeah, has really the, made it difficult the isolation isn't it yes so those that's those are the uh, challenges we've been facing but again most of all apart from the domestic violence is the rise on mental health issues okay and yeah, a lot of uh, mental health issues, usually uh, people would have a face-to-face -face, uh, therapy, yes. but this has been made uh, more difficult during this time of the pandemic when we all have to stay at home and only essential services. And mm -hmm. I'm saying that from experience because even um, when you're unwell, if you're not sick enough to go to a hospital, we've been doing telephone telephone okay, treatment sure. yeah. yes Tele so you don't go to you cannot just tell so you don't center. go to you have cannot to call make yeah. an appointment go to and yeah. it call make yeah. an appointment be so yeah. to it yeah. so wow. you can even up and be someone is going through a, wow. so you can even up yeah. through a, wow. so you can even up you know through their home or wherever they are so they, they cannot are. deal with all and this whatever. doesn't mean only people who are um, you know, maybe stuck at home because they are working from home. Mm. We have all the essential services. These okay. people are having mental issues as well. So that is an area that has also been affected that we cannot reach the, the, the help as that much and easy. as quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. as quickly as we would have liked to. So that's another area, especially in the community. Wow. And um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, COVID-19 has really um, changed the entire system, isn't it? Yes, it it's, has. Um, yeah, we are, we are navigating the new, in, new way of, of living at the moment. Yes. But, mm -hmm. um, wow, yeah. So I could also just add that the other thing we've noticed is a high rise in alcoholism, which is also <laughs> linked to mental issues. Mental issues, yes. Yeah, mental health. So that is another thing that has, uh, you know, they've been on the rise. And obviously, if there's alcoholism on the rise, then the then violence, there is violence, isn't it? Yeah, escalates. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So just people not being able to get that help, quick help that they could get previously, when things were normal, what we called normal. Now this is the now, new yeah, normal. Now this is the new normal. <laughs> yes. So before, let's say before the pandemic, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, before the pandemic. And even up to now, I'm still working from home. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it will take a while because like most countries, we are going through different waves of the, of the outbreak. So we, we have to go by the guidance that the government is providing to know okay. how to act. Yeah. Okay. Do you think there will be big change when Corona ends for you in both of the, uh, the areas that you are sitting on currently? Yes, I think there'll be a big change. First of all, even returning back to the to work and back to the office, it it looks like um, now the new normal will be uh, we work in turn. So there are some people who go to work on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Others go on Tuesday and Thursday, so that we we have that distancing and all that. Plus, a lot of organizations have now realized you can actually work from home you know so they can save on a lot of uh, things and probably that would help um to 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 improve on on the production okay. but apart from yeah apart from that you know like a lot of people have lost jobs so that even when we are going back to work a lot of people have have lost jobs and you know that is now another big issue. problem in the society yeah as well yeah with with that loss of jobs all obviously there's a rise in crime rates as well Ooh. so yeah so even by the time we go back it's gonna be very different and regarding the community work mm -hmm. it's like we've now have the backlog so obviously the onus is upon us now to, mm. to work backwards and make sure we can redeem ourselves in those areas that i mentioned earlier Okay. Wow. Yeah. Jen, you've got a lot of work, honey, to do. 
<laughs> yes, I do. So I better get prepared better to get face prepared, that. Actually, but I think you are well equipped for this because I've been watching your journey, you know, um, yes. with the things that you do, especially for the, for the you know, as, as the president of the Soro um, Timesti, I think you've been doing yeah. quite a lot of things. And I know you... Um, I know you are challenged at the moment because I know you are a woman of the people. You like being out and supporting and leading. <laughs> yeah, very much so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's not easy. You no, know, it's not you easy. You want to, uh, to do things for, especially when you are a service person. I know you yeah. are forced to, you know. But I'm just curious now, Jen, that you're sharing actually this. Have yes. you maybe thought, you and the organization and your team, have you maybe thought of, especially um, I'm talking about this in the now, in the community work, you know, for you as the president, you as, have you tried maybe different avenues? Because now everything's, everyone is online. Have you maybe yes. tapped into that or what, what has been your strategies? Yes, you have you put, mentioned because it. Because like uh, having these conversations online, like what we are doing yes. now, Yes, that is actually what we have. Uh, we are relying on a lot and uh, we just uh, give ourselves uh, tasks. And with that, we are able to, even just for our general meetings, we have our business meetings, we have um, our normal catch-ups just on Zoom. So, mm -hmm. or online, whichever um, uh, you know, avenue you may use. So that's the way we are, we are doing it. A lot of uh, the other things may be like, uh, when it comes to domestic violence, those are very sensitive issues. So we really cannot deal with them online mm -hmm. because there's a lot of um, protecting the individual individual and all that so yeah. that we leave it to the other authorities we don't really get involved but what we've done is that we also put together toiletries one of the communities that we serve a lot is the migrant community mm -hmm. and um, a lot of we have Australia receives a lot of uh, refugees and even yeah. though they come here and the government settles them it's not that they'll be comfortable throughout they encounter problems and what we've been doing is to provide toiletries. So we are still doing that. At least we're able to just package the toiletries, go, just call them and let them know what time we're arriving to deliver them, mm -hmm. leave them at the door, mm -hmm. no contact, mm -hmm. someone picks them just from outside their door. Wow. So we're still able to do little things like those and also just support um, uh, each other men, you know, or when it comes to uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. We're able to support each other through meet online meetings like this. We've had workshops um, that we leverage upon other organizations as well. Okay. So, yeah, we are really using that because I think this whole thing is affecting everyone. It's not um, just... <laughs> it's a global issue. It's, yes, it is. It's everywhere. Yeah, it is. That's why, like, for example, when we just had the first um, small opening for people to get out People were rushing out like madness. You'd think it's a cage. You've been caged and now you're being told if you're free, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. And that's dangerous as well. So we are also trying to make sure that we don't get carried away and that we control our actions so that we can actually have a, a hold of this whole pandemic. Yeah. I mean, we, we have to, to navigate, isn't it? Yes, we really and, do. Uh, and really... It, in Finding individual a balance, ways as a new well. balance, I think. Yes. And yeah, one challenge we've had is usually we have um, the Soroptimist International of Canberra partners with other, other Soroptimist clubs in other countries. So mm -hmm. one of our main um, um, you know, partners has been a Soroptimist club in Kenya mm -hmm. where we are um, building toilets and ablution blocks for a girls' school. And uh, usually we have a dinner dance. As you said, I like being out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we usually have a dinner dance and we fundraise through the dinner dance. So now again, as you said, the alternative, we've had, we'll, we'll have to do this online. Yeah. And um, to ensure that our projects are not affected. We're yeah. also in communication with the Kenyan club. We know that school kids are not in school anymore yeah. until next year, which is sad. Yeah. It's really sad. Yeah, it has really changed a lot of things. And um, I mean, in other, in, the, in other world, in other part of the world, you know, 
the kids were still able to go to school but sadly yes. it, you know in our country it wasn't the case so yeah, yeah but at I'm, least you are working towards you know achieving the goal that you, you you had you and the club had already started which is a good thing you're not just sitting yeah. waiting until the world gets back to normalcy or anything so yeah we're trying to do the least we can do at least to ensure that our projects do not stall mm-hmm. because um, it's, we, 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 we usually plan annually and we would love to make sure that our plans, if we can manage, we do mm-hmm. it even in the smallest way possible. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's good. Do you see yeah. new opportunities in your industry, Jen? And I want to address this in, um, allow me to go back to, to you working for the government in Australia. Yes. Um, do you see new opportunities in that industry in regulating fisheries? Oh, yes, I do. Because now that we've had a backlog and we've had to rely on just a small arm of the government to do this work, there's definitely, um, once we go kind of back to normal, there'll definitely be quite a lot of opportunities because now we want to ensure that we have enough people doing their jobs to, to make sure there's no, um, no, nothing illegal happening along our borders. Okay. So definitely, I believe there'll be opportunities. It's, it's a kind of, um, I don't know, cycle because you lose, people have lost jobs because um, the, the, they couldn't be paid. The, you know, businesses have closed down and things like that. Mm. The government has had to put in money to support those who have lost jobs. Okay. So obviously you find it, it's a whole, you know, it's kind of like a cycle because mm-hmm. once all this is over, they'll need people in different areas to, to, to um, achieve uh, the outcomes that they need to achieve. Mm. Yeah. So definitely there are opportunities. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that because... You yeah, know. we always you need to look at the bright side of life. Yes. The glass <laughs> I'm is one of those. Uh, half full, not half empty. The glass has exactly. to be half full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because for me, I say, look at the pluses, the positives also that have come with COVID, even in your individual absolutely. life. Absolutely. Yeah. If, I, mean, I mean, for me, this whole pandemic, and that's what I've been saying... Um, you know, on my social media, don't just sit and wait yeah. for the gates to open. What are you doing now in this season? Exactly. Because, because other people the, in this season, you know, they, 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 they are starting a new business. The other yes. people, wh- what are the needs? Now, that is what is actually my next question, because now that we are talking about, you know, the, the pluses of COVID-19, what are yes. the needs in your community and how do you intend to support them? Because that is where we are changing the narration of all yes. COVID-19. It has really destroyed everything. But there are needs in our community. There are needs in our government. So, Jen, mm-hmm. <laughs> how do you intend to, uh, to support the needs in the community? Looking at so now, my- we are ch- our glass is not half yeah. empty, but is half full. Yes. No, um, actually, there have been quite a few, a number of positives when you, as, you, as we have just said. Mm. And um, for me, I have been looking at all the uh, available government resources. Mm-hmm. And the government in Australia has given us a lot of resources in information. Mm-hmm. And what I've done, I am a, an interpreter, I'm a Swahili interpreter. Okay. And a lot of the people who are being affected by COVID, I'm from the multicultural community. Mm-hmm. So as an interpreter, I've been translating documents that are required for information, for people to know where to go if they need help, if mm-hmm. they need to be tested for mm-hmm. COVID, if they need to be supported uh, mentally, there are phone calls you can make to mm-hmm. certain organizations and you can be helped on the phone and all that kind of information I've been ensuring that it's reaching the communities. Mm-hmm. And with um, those who can read and write, I've also, we use, social media has been a big thing. Mm-hmm. The government Absolutely. is using even social media, Twitter, and all those yeah. to, to reach people. So I'm on that bandwagon. But aside from <laughs> that, also the government. You got it. 
<laughs> yeah, the government is providing funding for several things. And one of the uh, funding areas, a big area I keep on going back to is mental health. And so um, as, a, as a leader in the community, mm. I have been um, looking at where the funds are, you know, like the government funding, where it's coming from, mm -hmm. sourcing it and writing proposals to be able to uh, respond to the needs in the community. So for example, in the, with the mental health, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we've written, I've written proposals where we get funding so that we're able to carry on workshops online to help people or people who need to be visit, visited, we also ensure that that is done. Wow. Now that's a leader right there. You don't <laughs> Thank you. And wait. You are no, acting. because people look at, up to you, so you cannot sit and wait. I mean, it's no. a responsibility, Jen, isn't it? You know, yes. when, when, yes, you are, it is. when you are sitting in that position, you know, it's not only about you, it's about it, it's about the other people and now your your responsibility is how can I navigate this because they will call you to say Jen I'm stuck here but I think mm -hmm. the issue of mental health this is it's not only in Australia I think in Australia you uh, they are open to talk about it and like in most yes. countries they don't talk about this mental health but just mm -hmm. you know being I mean this whole thing it has really um, disrupted a lot of things and you know, I can totally um, um, understand why you are um, why you are really um, pushing for this. It's because yeah. you want to be able to help the women when they are going yeah. through, you know, their personal issues, even men, even, you know, young girls and all that. And, yes. you know, the issue of domestic violence, this is something that I think, you know, I've been reading online in Australia, it's something that has been going on for a, it's, it's something that goes on. And, you know, in Australia, they talk a lot about it actually yes. I, was, I was doing my research our, um, about it so but at least you have you know you're not just sitting and waiting you're acting upon these needs and see what you can do and what the government can do but the positivity is the government is lending yes. a hand yes the government is lending a hand and also people in the community for example uh, also um, in an organization where i'm on the uh, board mm. we have an east african community association we have had uh, situations where international students are stuck because okay. also they, yes because now they're here they have no money their parents back home have lost their jobs and everything, things like that. They also have lost jobs. Usually international students can work and subsidize mm -hmm. their pocket money mm -hmm. uh, so that they, their living expenses can be uh, paid. But yeah. now they've also had those issues. So people, we've mobilized people in the community and uh, provided information to groups where they, you know, like there are all these groups that are providing food they can they, they've been cooking food and packaging it and delivering it to these students and old people in the community who cannot go out because their health is compromised mm -hmm. that has also been being done but apart from that we have said be your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper yeah so that i find out from a friend how are you are you able to go shopping do you have groceries yeah. i'm going shopping now yeah. if you give me a list i can get groceries for you so okay. just supporting each other in that mm. manner as well. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, I mean, you are doing quite a lot. And um, I, I, you are, you are a, a woman of the people. And I really, really that I continue. That's all what I can say. But I'm just also curious to know, Jen, I mean, yes. we've, we've talked about the needs in the community and how you are dealing with them. Are, are you yes. putting anything specific? I mean, what, what, what's your strategy when Corona is contained? And well, once um, Corona is contained, for example, when I talk about the Soroptimist International, a lot mm -hmm. of our clubs have seen the membership, a lot of our clubs, and uh, because a lot of our members are retired uh, or elderly, and they have, um, you know, succumbed to this 
COVID situation mm -hmm. because they can't expose themselves. So with that, we have we are already actually doing a lot in trying to um, retain those members that we can and also get new members on board. We are really looking at getting younger people on board because mm -hmm. they're the leaders, future leaders. And yeah. so we are strategizing all across Australia and the West Pacific to okay. make sure that the, the clubs are actually, we, we, are, we are recruiting uh, members who will carry on this work mm -hmm. when our time is up, you know. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm um, among the, 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 um, the group that's doing that. And okay. that's why I had a have had at press meetings to see how we have had to do this by mm -hmm. ensuring that our numbers increase. Wow. That our you numbers are busy, here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate your time. It will be your final word to, to, to someone who is to, to with issues uh, in to, you know, you dealt, you've helped people with, you know, you mental health per se. You've yeah. had women, you know, reaching out domestic, we have violence, you know, there is a lot that is happening in our community, in your community, Jane. What yes. would be your advice? I would say everything starts with you. Never look at help from outside. Yeah, like when you're thinking of a problem, think of what can I do? What can I bring to the table, mm -hmm. really? Because a lot of at times I've met different individuals or even people who join a, a, an organization mm -hmm. and they're joining the organization for what the organization can do for them. Mm -hmm. But for me, I say, be the change that you want to see in the world. Amen. You first be that change. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's what I would say, yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have had it from Jen, Dr. Jen, all the way from Canberra, Australia. She is a woman of the people and she's encouraging you to be the change. She's encouraging all of us to be, the, to be solving problem people. Don't just wait for someone else to solve the problem. What are you doing yourself? If you're in trouble, act upon it. Do something. Be the change. That's what Jen is reminding us, isn't it? Yes, Sousa. <laughs> Be the change. And yes. um, this is also something that maybe we could also advise the, the people, uh, our viewers, Jen, is that you are not alone also. Yes. You are not alone. Don't be stuck in your own house, in your four walls, as I always say, struggling and, you know, reasoning with your own thoughts and going back and forth with the same questions, not getting anywhere, not getting any answer. Reach out. Yes. Reach out. Jen, she's waiting for you to reach out. She's, that's why she's sitting in as, as a leader. You know, you can always reach online. You can, you know, Talk to me also, this is what I always say, because we are here, you know, for each other. We are not here just to be here, just for the sake of being here. We are here for a reason and for a purpose. So whatever it is that you are battling in, know that you are not alone. Just reach us, you know, send us a message, drop us a, uh, uh, an inbox, whatever it is that makes you comfortable. Don't suffer alone. And then, do not forget to subscribe and to share this conversation because you know what? You will just never know who might be interested on this talk. And you also, they might be encouraged just the same as you have been encouraged. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for sticking up with me and I will see you soon with another inspiring conversation. Thank you and stay safe. See you soon.